So what is love? Well, according to Wikipedia, love is an emotion of strong affection and personal attachment. Love is also a virtue representing all of human kindness, compassion, and affection. The unselfish, loyal, and benevolent concern for the good of another. Love may describe actions towards others or oneself based on compassion or affection. In English, love refers to a variety of different feeling states and attitudes, ranging from pleasure, I love that meal, to interpersonal attraction, I love my partner. Love may refer specifically to the passionate desire and intimacy of romantic love, to the sexual love of Euros, Eros, E-R-O-S, to the emotional closeness of familial love, to the platonic love that defines friendship, or to the profound oneness or devotion of religious love, or to a concept of love that encompasses all of those feelings. This diversity of uses and meanings combined with the complexity of the feelings involved makes love usually difficult to consistently define compared to other emotional states. Love in its various forms acts as a major facilitator of interpersonal relationships and owing to its central psychological importance is one of the most common themes in the creative arts. Love may be understood as part of the survival instinct, a function to keep human beings together against menaces and to uh, facilitate the continuation of the species. So they got a list here, definitions, impersonal love, interpersonal love, biological basis, psychological basis, evolutionary basis, comparison with scientific models, cultural views, what the ancient Greeks thought about love, what ancient Romans thought about love. Um, Chinese, other cultures, Persian, Japanese, Turkish, Abrahamic religions, what they think about love. So, um, let's, yeah, let's take a look at Christianity, Judaism, and Islam. What do they say about love? And Buddhism. And political views. There's free love. So Christianity, the Christian understanding is that love comes from God, the love of man and woman, eros, E-R-O-S, eros, eros in Greek, and the unselfish love of others, agape, are often contrasted as ascending and descending love, but respectively are ultimately the same thing. So ascending and descending love. So the selfish love for yourself is, I guess, descending and love for other people is ascending. You're going to heaven. If you love others, if you love yourself, you're dragging yourself back down. I guess. Pride, self-pride maybe. I don't know. That's, um, there are several Greek words for love that are regularly referred to in Christian circles. And agape in the New Testament, it's a agape, A-G-A-P-E, or agape, agape, is charitable, selfless, altruistic, and unconditional. So whatever that love, the pronunciation, agape. A gap, a gape. A gapey, a gapey, <laughs> I guess. A gapey. So a gapey love. A gapey love. A gapey, gay. Gay love. In the Christian Bible, there's, they're talking about gay love. So a uh, gapey is charitable, selfless, altruistic, and unconditional. It's just given to you, but it's charitable, selfless, altruistic. You just love everybody. It's parental love, seen as creating goodness in the world. It's the way God is seen to love humanity. It is uh, the kind of love that Christians aspire to have towards one another. Then there's philio, P-H-I-L-E-O. It's uh, also used in the New Testament. Philio is a human response to something that is found to be delightful also known as brotherly love. Two other words for love in the Greek language, eros, it's just sexual love, and storage, child to parent love, were never used in the New Testament. So, so those are the four words that Christians talk about, the four types of love. One is agape, which is charitable, selfless, altruistic, love for others, love for humanity, love for goodness, and there's filio, which is uh, brotherly love, love for something that's delightful, something that you like. So there's love for humanity, love for something that's delightful, and eros, sexual love, and storage, uh, child to parent, the love from the child to the parent, are never used in the New Testament. 
So there's a t four different types of love. I think those are important distinctions. Eros is sexual love, which is a very clear love. Storage is child to parents, so this, uh, I guess, innocent, just childlike giving of love to somebody else is called storage. Filio is a human response that is found to be delightful. That's also known as brotherly love, which is almost actually seems to be saying different things there. Um, agape, it's a parental love, is seeing and creating goodness in the world. So love for humanity, love for others, love for um, goodness is agape. Then filio is a human response to something that is found to be delightful. So that actually sounds like hedonism. Um, so hedonism is brotherly love. So love humanity and just love however you want to love, right? And then there's eros, which is sexual love, and then storage, child to parent love. It's interesting to me, at least these distinctions. <laughs> Christians believe that to love God with all your heart, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself are the two most important things in life. Um, so that's yeah. Uh, I've heard that before. Very, very easy to remember. The two biggest laws for Christi uh, Christians for Christianity: love God with all your heart, mind, and strength. So love God with everything you got. That's rule number one. Rule number two: love your neighbor as yourself. And that's it. Love God with all your heart and love your neighbor as yourself. Love God. Golden rule. Love God. Golden rule. Those are the two most important things in life. The greatest commandment of the Jewish Torah, according to Jesus, of the Gospel of Mark, chapter 12, verses 28 to 34. So that's that's the book of Mark. Gospel of Mark, right? St. Augustine summarized this when he wrote, Love God and do as thou wilt. The Apostle Paul glorified love as the most important virtue of all, describing love in the famous poem, 1 Corinthians. He wrote, Love is patient. Love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it is not rude, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered. It keeps no records of wrong. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, and always perseveres. And that's 1 Corinthians chapter 13, 4, 4 to 7. And they usually got like a little New Testament Bible here. Corinthians, oh, do you have Corinthians? One Corinthians, thirteen, four to seven. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity, he's not. They're talking about charity. They're not even talking about love here. Though I speak with the tongues of men and angels and have not charity, I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and could not have charity, I am nothing. So... Um, So, Corinthians 1 talks about love. The Apostle John, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. John 3, 16 to 17. And I see John 3, 16 at stadiums all the time, at baseball games. John 3, 16. So, John 3, 16, right? For God so loved the world, he gave his one and only Son. Whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Well, I, b I believe in Jesus' message. I believe in the character that Jesus sought to establish and build. My problem with Christianity was that a lot of the Christians don't care for Jesus. They don't care about Jesus. They don't care about what his philosophy was, what his good works was, what his good works meant for us, and how we're supposed to interpret that for our own lives. They they downplay Jesus, and that, that really frustrates me. So, the Apostle John uh, also wrote, Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. John 1, 1 John chapter 4, verse 7 to 8. 
So God is love also in the book of John. God is love and God is, um, you know, uh, person to give Jesus uh, to have eternal life for the world, right? He, he, Jesus was key for our salvation. Through Jesus, the death of Jesus, the death, crucifixion, and resurrection of Jesus, uh, as Christianity goes, that is very symbolic of him coming down and saving our sins. Jesus died for our sins, and so therefore Jesus' death is key for our salvation. It's key for our uh, reconciliation and for um, mankind to get away from the sin of their ancestors, right? Because we all had original sin, and so Jesus saves us from that original sin. St. Augustine says that one must be able to decipher the difference between love and lust. Love, lust, according to St. Augustine, is an overindulgence, but to love and be loved is what he has sought for his entire life. So St. Augustine is uh, love and lust. He's making a distinction between love and lust. And I think it's an important distinction. He even says, I was in love with love. And I love love. I fucking love love. Love love. Love it. Finally he does fall in love. And he's loved back by God. St. Augustine says the only one who can love you truly and fully is God because love with the human only allows for flaws such as jealousy, suspicion, fear, anger, and contention. According to St. Augustine, to love God is to attain the peace which is yours. St. Augustine's Confessions. Christian theologians see God as a source of love which is mirrored in humans in their own loving relationships. Influential Christian theologian C.S. Lewis wrote a book called The Four Loves. Benedict XVI wrote his encyclical on God is love who said that a human being created in the image of God who is love is able to practice love to give himself to God and others which is a gapy and by receiving and experiences experiencing God's loves in contemplation errors this love of life according to him is the love of the saints such as Teresa of Calcutta and the Blessed Virgin Mary and is the direction Christians take when they believe that God loves them in Christianity, the practical definition of love is best summarized by St. Thomas Aquinas, who defined love as to will the good of another. St. Thomas Aquinas said the love is to will the good of another. So if you can enforce your will and pull their goodness out of them, that's, that's love. <laughs> right? So... To will the goodness out of others is Thomas Aquinas' best definition. I don't know if that's the best definition. I do like the distinction between lust and love. St. Augustine, um, St. Augustine, so not St. Thomas Aquinas, but St. Augustine, which I get those two mixed up. They had said uh, that lust is uh, an overindulgence. So too much lust is a bad thing. But love, and to be loved, is something that St. Augustine has sought for his entire life. That's been the point of his life, to get love, to give love. Um, so I think that's, that's an important distinction. So that's uh, love according to Christianity. Now love according to Islam. Uh, love encompasses the Islamic view of life as universal brotherhood that applies to all who hold faith. Among the 99 names of God, Allah, there is the name Al-Wadud, or the Loving One, which is found in Surah in the Quran 1190, as well as Surah, Quran 8514. God is also referenced at the beginning of every chapter in the Quran as ar rahman or ar Rahim, or the most compassionate, or the most merciful, indicating that nobody is more loving, compassionate, and benevolent than God. The Quran refers to God as being full of loving kindness. The Quran extorts Muslim believers to treat all people, those who have not persecuted them, with burr or deep kindness, as stated in Surah. Burr is also used by the Quran as in describing the love and kindness that children must show to their parents. So... Both of them, religions point out, love to their parents. 
but it sounds like it's more of an obligation than something that comes natural. And I think actually a child's love for their parents is a, a very normal, natural love. And since pedagogy of the oppressed says that our liberation will come from the weakness of the oppressed, I think we need to look towards the love of children, since that love is the only pure love there is. So more about love coming up.